This podcast is supported by FX's English Teacher, a new comedy from executive producers of What We Do in the Shadows and Baskets. English Teacher follows Evan, a teacher in Austin, Texas, who learns if it's really possible to be your full self at your job while often finding himself at the intersection of the personal, professional, and political aspects of working at a high school. FX's English Teacher is now streaming on Hulu. All new Mondays on FX. You are listening to the new Mutual Audio Network. Welcome home. The following audio drama is rated PG-13, suggesting that all children under the age of 13 should listen accompanied with an adult. have gotten a little too quiet since we left from our last episode. Episode? Oh, we are the Sonic Society, the world's largest showcase of modern audio theater, and right now we seem very stuck on the endings of things instead of the beginnings of the new year. A- any luck on getting us out of this future from the audioverse? We spent a great deal of effort leaving last week, even though the series wasn't fully completed. It seems something that draws a lot of audio dramatics can provide an equal amount of effort to release once engaged. Uh, any suggestions? Well, we're right near Elizabeth Quick. Elizabeth Quick? Isn't that the first-person recording series? Yes, Elizabeth Quick, living a life of convention and anxiety in the occasional mixed martial arts class, never believed she was powerful. Then an extinction event left behind a wild new planet, equal parts dangerous and astonishing. Now Elizabeth is in that wilderness alone, searching for her teenage daughter, and realizing that, just like the plants and animals she sees evolving in the blink of an eye, she must become someone she never thought possible. If we can feature episodes one to three, but leave the conclusion to the listeners, we may be able to escape before it ends the season. Well, uh, let's give it a shot. After all, what have we got to lose? Certainly not excellent audio drama. Okay, hold on. It all begins right here. On the Sonic Society. this thing works. Uh, my name is Elizabeth. Elizabeth Quick. Uh, it's September. I don't know the date. Day of the week? No idea. Year? Irrelevant. But, but we'll call it one. Yeah, we'll call it one. Year one. Because this isn't an end of the world story. It's a beginning. <laughs> That's Darwin. Hey, Dar. She uh, she knows what I mean about the beginning, and, and she's she's telling me to lighten up. You know, I found her in the woods a few weeks ago, asleep, curled up inside an old dead tree. Yeah, did you did you know horses like to curl up like that, like like a dog on the couch? That they even could. Do that? I don't think they could. Not before. Not before. And also, um, she's got some little sprouts coming up behind her collarbones. I think they're wings. (sighs) Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm aware of what that sounds like. What I sound like. But hear me out. I believe... But it's not just the ecosystem that shifted with a sudden dive in human population, but, but so has evolution. Jumping, jumping genes. Genes with a G. There are things out here. Oh, man, there are things out here that are just astonishing. Amazingly, almost mystically astonishing and weird. Plants, animals, things that are neither plants nor animals. And maybe it's humans getting knocked out of the way. But it's also definitely the stuff in the air. Because it changes everything. Every body. Just not predictably. And you're assuming, I mean, it changes them in bad ways. And yeah, yeah, it can be bad. And 
You know what? The jury is still out on all my change. Good, bad, ugly. And there is definitely plenty of bad out here, which is why I avoid, well, why I have to avoid the main roads, the main anything. But, but you know what? Sometimes this change, this change is more necessary because things were just not right. And, and we needed the goddamn change. We needed it. And sometimes you're getting way ahead of yourself, just sitting out here alone with a can of asparagus, easily the worst of the canned vegetables, and uh, this old Radio Shack tape recorder you found, complete with mixtape collection, and a note was with it, written in mostly gibberish, but, but it made just enough sense for me to know it's a suicide note. So, yeah, people changed. Okay, did the recorder pick that up? Yeah, that's not human. People still scream, just not like that. They sound artificial now. Uh, I might even be the only one who hears it that way. I'm not a doctor or a shrink or a damn evolutionary biologist. I just used to draw for a living. I mean, they were scientific illustrations. I, I, I did a book on the nervous system. Freshwater fauna of Central America. That was one of my favorites. Plants. Three books on plants, actually. <clears throat> yeah, so so I know a thing or a million about plants. Mm, lots of animals. Uh, and fungi. Yeah. I know a lot about fungi, which are distinctly not plants or animals. And maybe now they brought us down and I didn't know enough to stop it. So, so yeah, I'm just an artist and a wife and a mom. And, and I took a mixed martial arts class once. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I did. I was, I was those things. Now I survive. And and I search. And I draw still, because that's what I did before. I, I drew to leave a record, a tribute to the ingenuity of nature. And I guess now I can I can do that with my voice, observe, record. Who am I, right? That's what you're wondering. Who what makes me qualified? Um I don't know. I mean, my husband, Tom, used to say I paid too much attention to everything, that I looked so closely I found things that weren't even there. Yeah, that was actually the last thing that he said to me before he got up from his laptop a year ago and jumped out of our eighth floor window. I don't think he was trying to hurt himself. I think he was trying to fly. And when he hit the ground, he didn't die right away. He, he ran right up until an out-of-control Amazon Prime truck slammed into him. He, he ran on two legs that were so shattered. One knee was completely backwards, and his ankle trailed behind him like it was on a string, which I guess was, was a tendon or something. And the whole time he ran, he screamed. So I know people still scream. But not like that, not even close to that. People people scream like they like they forgot how. Ah, uh, hey Dar. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. That's enough of that for tonight. Hey, you want some asparagus? It tastes like slimy shit. Huh. I, I, I don't know if I can do this anymore. I don't know if I can do this. Elizabeth Quick here. It's been a couple days since we... Whatever this is I'm doing. I'm going to start a fire while we talk. I, f I found this book I want to read today. Gotta have some light. And, um, and the flint, it calms me down. Something about the repetitive, violent motion. Meditative and digressive, just like my mixed martial arts class. And, you know, I, I, I wanted to to say that I, I didn't just take that class once. I took it for an entire year, right up until, yeah, right up until, and I was actually a total natural. Ah, I really should be better at making a fire by now. Ah, shit. Tom, 
uh, my husband Tom always did the fire when we used to camp in college. And, and then even once we had our daughter and she'd be crying for warmed up formula, he'd be banging two rocks together to make a spark. I found this flint kit when I raided an REI, but Tom, he just needed rocks. I, I should have appreciated that more at the time, paid more attention to that. You want to give up? Okay, yeah, go on. Give up. Give up. Who's here to care? Who's here to care? Just just give up. Just give up. Oh, okay. Okay. There it is. There it is. There it is. We got it. Now we got it. There the hell it is. You know, you haven't lived till you've sat by firelight and read books on animal tracking at the end of beginning, beginning of the world. Hmm. There's a whole chapter just on poop. This book is just laying on the ground in the middle of nowhere all by itself mm, a sign divine intervention if you believe in that which I don't yeah this book this book was laying there because it thinks it needs to help me because it thinks I've given up on June June bug she's my kid have I talked about my kid I am um, yeah, um, hang on. I want to talk about June. Junie. She's my daughter. She's 17 years old, and I, I depending on the date, uh, she might be 18. I, I don't know what date it is. I do know that June disappeared. Two weeks after her dad's accident, we um, we were in the parking lot of a uh, of a strip mall. I'm sorry, forgive me, my memory is. Yeah, we we were we were trying to get something to eat, anything, and and people were running, screaming, fighting with each other. There was a lady trying to assemble a, B a Barbie dream house in the middle of the road, and I, I remember a naked man smashing windshields with a Vitamix and I I, I don't know I, I got distracted I suddenly couldn't find her Judy June oh god oh god oh god oh my god <clears throat> yeah anyway that's what I said uh, June is the smartest most empathetic kid funny as hell funnier than me observant like me um, she's also had anxiety like me since she could talk, walk, breathe, anxiety disorder, sensory processing issues, all things I, I could make worse for her with my own hamster wheel brain. So this night, this awful night, when I couldn't find her, I was sure I, I, I'd spot her on the ground, cowered someplace, like under the minivan or in the fetal position in the cart drop-off. But... Instead, I saw her in the wide open. She doesn't like the wide open. She never chooses the wide open. But there she was, maybe a hundred feet away from me, standing. Not cowering. Not even scared. Just still. She's never still. And then suddenly everybody around her scattered. Like, like birds from a tree. It was so strange. And then, and then June was all alone. Oh, oh, well, she was all alone, except she, she wasn't. She, um. What? June was not alone because there was a wolf. 
a huge wolf. This wolf was the size of a bison. This wolf came up to my kid's shoulders. Even that early into this whole thing, animals were changing. And that wolf and my daughter were staring at each other, eyes locked. And I could see both of their chests heaving as if they were breathing very hard, very fast, in unison. And then, and again, I tried to scream, and then it just came out, Junie, what are you doing? And then the wolf turned and started to walk toward the road, and, and, and I'm sure I was relieved then. I, I thought, okay, we're okay. Uh, but then, so did my girl. She started walking toward the road after the wolf. June, look at me. But she didn't, she didn't. Why didn't she? she did she not hear me? Or did she just choose not to look at me? I, 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 I think I, I started to get my my air back in my lungs and my my legs started to work again a little and 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 then somebody 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 pushed me down into the ground into the asphalt. I don't know. My my lips were scraped and my my cheek was scraped. And all the skin was scraped off. And I, I I must have been held down against my will. Or or why else wouldn't I run after her? Why wouldn't I have just taken off and run after her and gotten her? Yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 can't, I can't remember anything else after after that. And I can't remember anything else from that night, from a few other nights, more and more nights. Is it the dust? Is it me being a shit mother? Yeah, I'm definitely a shit mother. <laughs> Do you ever wonder why you keep going? <laughs> yeah. I, I wondered that all my life, even before all this happened. I, I wondered it about everything. <laughs> and I... Oh, but oh my God. Oh my God, that's a... That is a wolf. That's the first wolf I've heard in nine months. Oh, God help me. God help me, God help that wolf, and God help anybody who gets in my... Elizabeth Quick, Episode 2. saw it. The wolf and I saw. <sighs> you want to tell me I can't be sure what I saw? You want to tell me I can't trust anything I see or anything I say to, to you, to myself, because of the, um, because, well, I mean, obviously because of... I need you to understand, okay? I need you to understand this. I'm going to talk about how this all started, how, how everything in the world started. Um, and, and I need you to know what, when this all started, <laughs> and people were just acting off. That's all, just off. First, it, it seemed like increased stress, anxiety from all the tragic climate events, one after another. And then stress became mental illness. Full hospitals, jails, well... <laughs> Well, more full, full of every walk of life for a change. And uh, scientists, they eventually traced all this, this, this global madness to an overgrowth, right? A fungus, magic mushrooms, but on some sort of epic scale. An overgrowth meant... This stuff was growing into the plumbing, the electrical wiring, internet fiber. I've always hated computers and the internet and, 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 
and that didn't matter because the stuff was also just releasing into the air. But but it did seem more concentrated where there was civilization, which is why I'm out here. Okay, no, no, that's that's only part of why I'm out here. I like it out here. I, I didn't care for people even before they, they were all tripping. So, did mushrooms exterminate us? Fungus is poison sometimes. Yeah. But fungi... It's also got this incredible ability to make life from rot, to cause rebirth, to, to grow from what is dead. You've heard of mycelium? I mean, they make everything from that. Well, they used to. And, and maybe fungi? It saw an opportunity. It saw an opportunity to start the world over without people. And who could blame it? The ones of us who are, who are left, we're, we're different. I've been trying to figure it out. Is it that we're more of whatever we were before? Like like our tendencies? Our tendencies turned into true nature? Like our... What the fuck? Something's wrong with me. With me as a mother. June used to have these tantrums. They started when she was a toddler and they got more violent and longer and more violent every year. And by the time she was 12, she was bigger than me and stronger because she'd never been able to sit still. And she could throw a solid wood chair across the room. Tom, he would hold her a bear hug was all that had calmed this kid when panic set in. I could have held her. I never even tried. I, I never even tried. I was too afraid, afraid, afraid I'd hurt her or she'd hurt me or, or uh, I'd hurt her. I was afraid, afraid. When I took MMA, I won the class tournament. Did I tell you that? Punching, kicking, especially kicking, just... Just every part of me could be in that fight. And it was, I mean, I'd get in some some zone. My friend Tracy said I disappeared sometimes in sparring. Like behind my eyes, I wasn't there or something, she said. But but for me, from my perspective, I never lose myself. Which maybe it'd be better if I did. If I separated myself from the, the violence. But I don't. I don't disappear. I just don't worry anymore about anything except what's in front of me. That's all there is in the world, which to a person with nearly constant anxiety can be a relief. I think what surprised me the most when I kicked that man's face in a little while ago was how easy it was. I mean, both physically and mentally, it was easy. And, uh, and, and I was also surprised how quiet I was. No, no yelling, cursing, no screaming, none from him either. No pleas for mercy or, 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 or I mean, he fought back, but without a peep. And I'm wondering, is it because we've all had to learn to become invisible out here to survive? Or is it because whatever was wrong with him is wrong with me too? Could he feel it? The changes from the dust? Should I be able to feel it? Should I, should I be feeling something? I didn't kill him. I know that's what you think, but I didn't. And I'm wondering if I should have. Because now he'll just die slowly of an infection inside his broken nose or something. God damn it. He was wearing animal hides like he thought he was a damn pioneer king and that breaks the pact that I have with the animals, all the wild, amazing animals that you don't kill animals in this, this weird, astonishing, bursting new world that told humans we weren't welcome the old way, only the new way. And he came for me first. He, he came for me first with a pickaxe. He came at me first. And God damn it, he interrupted what I was trying to tell you. And oh God. I'm back. I'm back from, from going back. 
I mean, I went back to, to where I smashed that guy, where I smashed him down, and he was gone. And I saw footprints, so it wasn't an animal that dragged him off, though they'd have every right to. I'm an animal now, asshole. I'm an animal now, and I do it again to you. I would do it again. And... Okay. I have to tell you now what I was trying to tell you before that man messed it all up. I saw the wolf. I found it, and I saw it, and here's how. I did just like the book said. I followed the tracks and the scat and the broken twigs. I followed the really, really strong tracks on the other side of the stream, just east of the railroad line and way too close to that carpet factory for comfort. I tracked it up a, a narrow trail that skirted the edge of a rock face that I guess used to be popular with climbers. And I could see their little metal rings still stuck in the granite. I tracked it through a wonderful grove of young aspen populated by some strange birds that looked like crows but had red crests like cardinals and, and they, they drilled the trees like woodpeckers and any other day I would have stopped to draw them to make sure I got it down a record of awe yeah yeah the awe record but not today not today I kept going today I tracked I tracked it until the ground cover got so thick I lost the prints entirely and I had to look for the most subtle signs just the subtlest flattened leaves snapped stems and and then and then I saw that there were these much larger flat spots in the ground cover not feet not 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 even legs what looked like whole um whole whole body like a whole body like like it was it was dragging itself or something was dragging it and of course that makes me wonder where where was this body before did it just appear? Was it on the wolf's back? Did it fall from the sky? But I, I couldn't dwell on that. But I felt my stomach clenching and I tried to remember to breathe. Just breathe. Just breathe. And then all of a sudden there it was. A cliff. Just all of a sudden a cliff's edge. And maybe like 50 feet of open air and another cliff's edge with a hundred foot drop between and on that other cliff's edge the wolf how did it get over there did it fly over there and how the hell did she oh okay um wait i'm ahead of myself again i i, I said i saw the wolf and i know it was the wolf and not just any wolf it was the wolf because it was standing over my daughter. June was on the ground, flat. She's not moving. And so I ask again, how did she get over there? I mean, I don't understand. The tracks just stop. They just stop at the edge. And I, God, I had the urge to call out to her. But then, but then I, I, I didn't because it scared me. It scared me that I would call and she wouldn't move. She wouldn't get up. She would move it all, and that would mean that she was gone. And that would be it, I guess. I just, you know, I would just hurl myself off the cliff then, because, I mean, what the hell am I doing out here otherwise? What's the point of all this? And, and, and with my luck, just like my husband, I, I would hurl myself off, but I wouldn't die right away. I would just live on sort of half broken. And why, why should I get to end this whole disaster so easily? I nearly killed a man with my bare fists. I don't deserve easy. And my mind, it tried to get away then. And I thought, and what? I thought, am I suffering out here? I have room to breathe and move and see in a way I never felt before. I never felt any of that in my life before. But now I, I have it in a place that's just, just full of awe on top of the suffering. I know my kid is suffering and I haven't taken it away. It's just going on and on and on. Unless it isn't. <laughs> I, 
I don't know. I don't know what to wish for. The end or the beginning. The end or... And then I was on my knees somehow. I don't remember getting there. And then I heard a sound that made my skin crawl. And then I realized that sound was coming out of me. And I, I, I came back to, to myself somehow. Oh, oh yeah, I, I, I came back because of rocks, rocks falling. And then I, I looked again. I looked again and... <laughs> the wolf was gone. June was gone. And there was no indication there ever had been a body, a uh, person, by person on the ground at all. I have to sleep now. I have to sleep. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Elizabeth Quick. Episode 3. The only way I know of in a sane state, in a normal human state, wingless, still being made of bones and a slave to mortality and gravity, the only way that I know of to get to the opposite side of a cliff with a hundred foot drop off is to go around it. Problem is no tracks. None. All I've picked up are smaller things, slithering things, scurrying things. Yeah, don't tell me that's because my kid and that wolf were never here. Do not tell me that! This is Elizabeth. Did I say that? Darwin and I have been at it all day. I didn't give up. I didn't effing give up. We've been moving through overbrush so thick I can barely walk. And who cares? I'm getting my kid, right? I'm getting my kid. And the ground is uneven and it's dry. It's so dry that everything snaps and crackles when you touch it. And then some of it, I mean, this just, this just turns to dust. Is that the dust? What dust is that? There's no fungus here. Is this safe dust? Because it's too arid here. That's weird, right? It's so arid here that there are cacti with blue and purple pads with red sticker things. Sticker things? What, what are they called? Why can't I remember what they're called? What's wrong with me? Nothing. Nothing's wrong with me. They're cacti. We're nowhere near a desert. I, I think we're near St. Louis. And so I have to wonder, what about this dust? Is this dust part of the new ways of the world? Does, does the ecosystem see I'm still here and adapt on the fly to get rid of me? hot and I'm shaking and I'm ready to throw myself down on the ground and uh, I was something somewhat you heard that right I'm a murderous bitch on a rampage try me and Darwin says try her too she's an effing pegasus <laughs> I woke up this morning mad so damn mad and sad. What's wrong? What's wrong with me? I tripped. I tripped over this cactus. And now can you hear this? That's air coming out of the hole I made when my boot hit it. This air, it has a smell like savory flowers, salty flowers. Maybe, maybe that's a smell to attract insects or other prey. Or maybe it's just more poison. <laughs> what? What? 
What? Yeah, I have to have to keep going. Yeah, I can feel we're headed back up an elevation. It's getting dark. Come on, Darwin. Come on. The ground levels out up here. <laughs> it's gotta be soon. The place where I saw her. I did see her. <coughs> Drink some water, Elizabeth. Another hour and a half of climbing and the environment up here shifted so much. It's like we're on a different planet. Grass is almost to my hips. But what's really wild are these vivid green flowers mixed in. And they they look like seahorses. And they hang from the top of the grass, which bends from their weight. It's like... It's like we're in the ocean. And the pollen inside these little seahorses is iridescent. When I roll it between my fingers, it coats my hands. It reminds me of the Halloween that June went as a mermaid, and I would find her glitter green fingerprints in the house for weeks. I seem to have my words back. What should I do now? The ground is so soft, it's like a bed. I could sleep here forever. God, I'm so effing tired. Stop, don't you stop, don't you stop, don't Going, I have to crawl. I've been going another hour, and the temperature's dropped. Ten degrees, maybe more. And the air is wet and cold, and the same with the ground. Oh, I hear that. You hear that, wolf? And how is there moss? How is there moss? So much moss everywhere. It's beautiful. My God. Listen. Just wait. <laughs> She's up here. She's up here with me. The sun's gone down, but it's not dark up here. The moss is, is now the only ground cover as far as I can see. And it glows. This is the light source. This is what makes it light up here. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And, and, and it scares me because I feel like she brought me here and I, I don't know what. <laughs> no, okay. Um, yeah, the moss is not it. Um, that's not all. There's, uh, there are these other little dots of yellow light. And from far away, I thought maybe lightning bugs, but they weren't moving. And when I got closer, I saw the dots are mushrooms. Okay, they're mushrooms. There's mushrooms everywhere. And that's why, that's why I don't know. Are these good mushrooms or bad mushrooms? Is there such a thing as good mushrooms anymore? And mushrooms are connected. Maybe everybody knows that from eighth grade science. But yeah, they're, they're not always multiple organisms. Sometimes they're just one under the ground holding, holding hands and, and not just communicating amongst themselves, but helping everything else with roots communicate with each other too. And now maybe they're helping me communicate with June, who maybe is better off without me. No, no, no. No, no, she's with a wolf. She's with a wolf, Elizabeth. <laughs> Maybe I should just eat this mushroom and find out. I didn't eat it, but I did lick it. Nothing happened. I am telling you this as a totally sane person. And I know they say insane people don't know they're insane. But I'm telling you right now that the mushroom lights, they're a path. They light up a path. As soon as I saw it, I, I couldn't believe I didn't see it right away. And I'm sure I'm not the only one who sees it. I won't be alone here. I will not be alone here. Come on, Darwin. Well, we were able to lift off again and certainly drew enough interest that the energy from all those listeners has given us enough power to try to finally escape the end of the audioverse. Now, if we can just find an exit... But the audioverse is collapsing around us and, and Nadsrim is supposed to start next week. Nadsrim? Of course, the annual National Audio Drama Scriptwriters Month takes place every year in the month of February. Yeah, that's the one. Well, hold on then, Jack. I may have a solution. Uh, I, I, I guess until next week, folks. Now, let's hope David can get us out of this one. We've got new shows to write and produce.
this as being a Sonic Cinema production.